So Microsoft Copilot, the current craze and talk in the Microsoft world. But if you don't know how Copilot can work in your workday, it's okay. I used Copilot for a week and I'm gonna show you how it improved my workday and what didn't work so well. This is my story. This is my story. This is my story. I know we've all heard of Copilot. It's the newest thing in the Microsoft world. It's all the craze right now. But if you've been feeling a little bit behind on the whole AI trend in general, you're not alone. I was the same way. So I'm gonna take you along with me for a full week of using Microsoft Copilot. I've never used it before. That was until this week when Matt Dressel gave me total access to Microsoft Copilot. I did no prior research and I wanted to see how much it could help me in my everyday tasks. Hopefully this video becomes your guide about where to incorporate AI into your life and you're gonna see where Copilot really helped me and where Copilot didn't really do much for me. If you want more free content regarding Copilot and all the other updates going on in the Microsoft world, make sure to subscribe to our weekly newsletter. Okay, so we hit Monday. All I got was a message from Matt Dressel saying, hey, you have access to Copilot, which is really exciting, except I already ran into my first problem, as in, I didn't know where Copilot was. I didn't know, is it an application? Do I have to go to an extended web browser? Would I just find it magically in my search bar? I had no idea. Granted, I'm the one who chose to do zero research prior to this, but I still felt this should be a little bit more intuitive. So honestly, Monday, super uneventful. I really couldn't find it. That was until I opened my Outlook and I saw the little co-pilot icon appear in the corner and I felt like I hit the jackpot. So a lot didn't happen on Monday, sorry. But my takeaway on Monday was co-pilot shows up in all of your Microsoft tools and really adapts to the name, co-pilot. It's there when you need it. Now, the next issue at hand was learning what can Copilot actually help me with. Like I said previously, I don't use AI really in my day to day, so trying to adapt AI to my workday actually posed to be a real challenge. I find that when I try to use AI, it actually requires a lot more mental energy because I'm trying to figure out what does it want to help me with. So, for my first Copilot test drive, I decided to start with something easy or I thought it was easy. Because Matt Dressel told me that Copilot connects to all of my Microsoft data. I went into Loop, I clicked the little Copilot icon, and I decided to ask it, can you make me a daily task list? You see, my thought process was, if it can connect to all my Microsoft data, like Planner, To Do, it should really be able to make me a task list, right? Yeah. Uh, it did not work. As you can see, it literally explicitly tells me it won't connect to my Planner or To Do lists. And then it asked me if I could provide more information on the tasks I needed to get done. Kind of a fail, but also it's on me for not doing prior research on it. No harm, no foul, I decided to finally phone a friend, also known as YouTube, and see what other people were using Copilot for. I found that people were using it to summarize Teams meetings, recap email threads, which is super useful if you're on super long ones, and grammar checking Word docs. Tuesday's key takeaway was learning what Copilot wants to help me with and how Copilot pulls my data in. It's not just typing in data that's fresh and new, it's actually pulling from my meetings and my emails and my loop. Okay, spoiler alert, Wednesday was the turning point for Copilot and me. I think we're becoming friends now, which feels really good. So a little behind the scenes to kind of set the stage for you. Wednesdays at Bulb Digital are creative days. And on this particular creative day, we were doing blog writing, which is where we take a couple hours of time and we all sit down and write the blogs that you guys get to read. And so I had made a general outline, as you can see here, super bare bones, nothing super exciting. So I decided to ask Copilot, can you make me a new outline with time constraints and specific details added? And this is what Copilot gave me. You can see the differences. Mine is super bare, like one to two bullet points and Copilot's breaks down the time, what we should be working on. And honestly, in my opinion, it's a little overkill, but if you make meeting agendas or agendas for certain projects, this might be a great feature for you to try out. 
Also, I don't know if I said this before, but a lot of this work is happening in Microsoft Loop. I am curious to see how this would work in Microsoft Teams if you were creating an agenda outline. So the next part of our creative day was writing our blog outlines. And sure enough, right when I opened Word, Copilot was waiting for me. So I decided to see, can it write my blog outline with very little information to start with? Honestly, it was okay. I kind of shame on myself because I didn't give it more information and it sounds like an AI bot. That's all there is to it. And that kind of made me think of Matt Dressel and Emma in the Copilot webinar where they explicitly say, Copilot is not great at generating brand new content for you. So I decided I probably should do some actual work and write my outline and ask Copilot if it could make it more engaging or give me any other tips. And it did a pretty good job. It got really specific on each day what I should talk about. And just after giving it some data and a little extra push, it really did benefit me. I'm not saying the outline was perfect or that I even used it all, but Wednesday's takeaway was Copilot does a lot better when you give it content to work with. So Thursday ended up being my favorite day using Copilot because it actually helped me with a daily task that takes me a ton of time. Quick backstory, if you don't know already, we have a podcast called Make Others Successful and it's part of my marketing task to write the descriptions, pull out meaningful quotes, etc. all that with those episodes. On average, it can take me two to three hours just to pull that information out. So I decided to take our transcript and plug it into Loop just copy and paste and ask Copilot, can you give me the main points of this podcast and pull out three meaningful quotes from the episode? Not only did it do it, but it did it so quickly. And I noticed that it actually picked up on the context and the nuances of this specific podcast conversation, which is a huge win. Between using Copilot and a little learning curve with it, it only took me about an hour of time to get everything I needed from this podcast episode, which is incredible. And I predict in the future when I use it, it probably will go down to 45 or 30 minutes now that I know how to use it in this context. So Thursday's main takeaway was Copilot can handle a lot of data. And that is the one thing I've noticed with ChatGPT. I've tried this before and it just gives me an error message. So don't be afraid to try out Copilot for your large amounts of data, Word documents, and you can ask it for specific requests or directions with that data. We've made it to Friday. I felt like this day was never going to come, but I went into a lot of confidence with Friday and I went in with a list of things that I wanted to use Copilot for that I hadn't gotten to try earlier this week. First thing I wanted to use Copilot for was action items and meeting summary notes. Normally during our marketing meetings, I am writing longhand notes, creating checklists, to-do lists, special notes, but I decided to be risky and just enable Copilot during this meeting. And afterwards, I decided to ask Copilot to summarize the meeting and it did it beautifully. In bullet points, it gave me names of who talked about what. And I'm not saying it was perfect, but if you are sick or don't make it to a meeting, this would be a great tool to utilize instead of watching the meeting back. So the second thing I asked it to do was give me meeting action items and it did a pretty good job. I still think I'm going to write longhand notes just for action items because I don't want something to fall through the cracks, but this gave a really good overview and I think captured a lot of what was said. So I wanted to see how Copilot can work in emails and Outlook. Now a preface, I don't use email very often. It's just not a part of my everyday, but I still wanted to try it. So I decided to ask Copilot if it could write me an email to my coworker, Emma, and ask her, how she's liked Copilot and what she could use it for. It's kind of a stiff response. Like we can all admit that that sounds like AI, but what I figured out is there's actually a tone bar that you can choose how you want it to sound. And I didn't experiment with this full transparency, but I think if you struggle to write emails or if you write a ton of emails, this could be a really good way to just get ideas out on paper and maybe you can use it to sound more like your own voice or manipulate it a little bit. So we've reached the weekend. My week with Copilot is done, but will I keep using it? Yeah, for a few things I think I will. So the three things I'm gonna use Copilot for are podcast descriptions, save me a ton of time, 
meeting action items, and summarizing, especially for out of office or sick days, I think this will be super useful. And to draft the random email I need to every once in a while. Exploring AI is a completely new territory for so many of us, and it's okay if you feel a little uncomfortable by it. But I hope this video gives you a little courage and maybe that push to try using Copilot or other AI softwares in your everyday workday. Now, if you're also interested in learning more about Copilot, check out our on-demand webinar all about how Copilot can increase your productivity in the day. Link in the description.